Hello students, welcome to study hive. In this video we are going to discuss the chemical properties of metals. This is the second part of your third chapter that is metals and non-metals. So we are going to discuss how does the metals reacts with oxygen, how does it reacts with water, how does it reacts with acids and solutions of other metal salts and also how does it reacts with non-metals. These five things we are going to discuss. Please listen carefully and focus on the examples and the equations I am giving for each of them. Let us start with the first one. Reaction of metals with the oxygen. So how does the metals react with the oxygen? The metal reacts with the oxygen to form metal oxide. You can see here metal reacts with oxygen to form metal oxide. We have done one of this activity which uh, focuses on reaction of oxygen and metals that is burning of magnesium ribbon. What happened there? Magnesium ribbon got burnt and it formed a white powdery substance which was collected in a china dish and uh, that is that was magnesium oxide. So what had happened there? Metal that is magnesium reacted with oxygen and it formed metal oxide that is magnesium oxide. So let us see some of the examples examples other than that copper reacts with oxygen to form copper oxide aluminum reacts with oxygen to form aluminum oxide so let us see how does what are the properties of this metal oxides what are the properties of this metal oxides this metal oxides are basic in nature where we have studied that uh, this uh, metal oxides are basic in nature we have studied this in the acids and bases when they react with the acids they form salt and water these two are neutral substances. So this, this reaction tells us that the metal oxides are basic in nature. The, the, the next property of metal oxides is they are insoluble in water and uh, some of them are soluble in water which they are called as alkalis. So some of them are soluble in water and they form alkalis. For example, see sodium oxide reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide. This sodium hydroxide is alkali. So next thing what we are going to study is all these metals whatever reacts with the oxygen does not show the same reactivity towards the oxygen all metal sh shows different kind of reactivity with the oxygen different type of affinity towards the oxygen some are highly reactive they are potassium and sodium when they are kept open in the air they react and uh, they, they react very vigorously. That's why they are kept always immersed in a mineral oil or in the kerosene. So this is the frequently asked questions that uh, in the previous uh, years. So why potassium and sodium are kept immersed in the kerosene? This is the frequently asked question on this concept. Some of the metals like magnesium, aluminium, zinc, lead etc. They react with the oxygen and uh, form a thin layer like this on the surface of the metal you can see that I have uh, I have drawn two layers one is this pinkish layer of metal oxide another one is inside that is metal layer so what happens when the when they form metal oxide they becomes protective and does not allow the inside metal to react with the oxygen which is there here oxygen will be present in the air everywhere but this metal oxide becomes protective in nature and it protects the inner layers of the metals against the reaction with the oxygen they become protective so hence we need not have to take any of the precautions to pre uh, prevent uh, oxidation of these metals the oxidized layer itself takes care of that so this is also one of the important question which is asked many a times so next one is metal oxides are basic in nature we have already studied this that is some of the example for let us take aluminum oxide when it reacts with hydrochloric acid it forms aluminum chloride and water so it forms salt and water that's why it is basic in nature metal oxides are insoluble some of the metal oxides dissolve to form alkalis so let us see what are alkalis alkalis are basic salts they are basic in nature which dissolves in water when the metal oxide react with water it forms metal hydroxide so next reaction what we are studying is reaction of metals with water. How does they react with water? When the metal reacts with water, they form metal oxide plus hydrogen gases released. Let us see. Potassium reacts with water to form KOH, potassium hydroxide, hydrogen gas is released and heat energy is released. The, whenever there is a release of heat energy, we say that kind of reaction as exothermic reactions. 
let us see another one example calcium reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas next one is aluminium reacts with water to form aluminium oxide and hydrogen gas is released so what is the difference between these three types of uh, three, three metals see potassium calcium and aluminum let us see take three, three examples potassium is highly reactive that's why it can react with even the cold water calcium is moderately reactive it is it comes under the moderate reactive metals so it can react with the hot water but when we come to aluminum and uh, iron what happens they react with the steam they comes under the uh, below moderately reactive metals they are very less reactive they have very less affinity towards water that's why they don't react so we will study about the reactivity series later on let us see how the metals reacts with the acid whenever the metal reacts with the acids they form salt and hydrogen gases released we have already discussed this in chapter 2 that is acids and bases and we have also seen how to identify how to do a confirmation test for hydrogen please if you are not watched this lesson please i'll uh, give the link in the description box please watch that video also okay next we are discussing reaction of the metals with solutions of other metal salts so let us take two metal salts metal uh, metal salts a solution of b so here the metal will be b here the metal will be a let us assume that metal a is more reactive than metal b so what happens the displacement reaction takes place here so metal a being more reactive it displaces the metal b from its salt its compound and it forms salt solution of b and metal b is separated okay for this you have to refer some any of the displacement reactions you will be able to understand that so reactive metals will displace less, less reactive metal so b being very least reactive when compared to metal a that's why it get displaced here so for that you have to understand the reactivity series for to know which is more reactive and which is less reactive you have to study reactivity series so i have already explained this one in the previous chapter that is acids and bases and also chemical reaction both the times i have explained but still i am going to do it once again for you so i am uh, giving a one easy trick to remember that is psc mazel hardly could make solid gold perfectly this is a mnemonic to remember reactivity series of the metals see p stands for potassium s stands for sodium c for calcium m for magnesium a for aluminium zinc zinc for z i for iron l for lead see fro again from this we have to take the first letter we have to consider only the first letter like this so h stands for hydrogen c stands for copper m stands for mercury s stands for silver gold platinum so when we take from here when we move from here to here from potassium to platinum the reactivity goes on decreasing so potassium are highly reactive and platinum is least reactive so these these uh, which comes in the middle are moderately reactive so hope this uh, reactivity was clear if you learn this reactivity series you will be able to decide which metal uh, is stronger uh, highly reactive and which displaces which metal so highly reactive metal always displaces the least reactive metal see for example potassium will not be displaced by platinum or gold or silver but if it is silver nitrate like a uh, silver salt you, it will be displaced by any of the metal which comes above this above silver whichever the metal comes it can be easily displaced the silver can be easily displaced when it comes to calcium calcium cannot displace sodium because sodium is more reactive than calcium calcium can displace magnesium because magnesium is comparatively less reactive when compared to calcium next one we are going to discuss reaction of metals with non metals so we know what are metals and what are non metals so let us learn how both of them react so metals form ionic bonds with non metals and they form ionic compounds so what are ionic compounds what are ions positive or negatively charged atoms are known as ions so ionic compounds are made up of ions ionic compounds are made up of ions so let us see how does the ionic bond is formed
ionic bond is formed by complete transfer of electrons complete transfer of electrons makes the ionic bond when we come for the covalent bond we always see that sharing of the electrons is seen we will learn about covalent bonds in the carbon and its compounds chapter in the further lessons okay so let us uh, let us focus on ionic bonds now ionic bond is formed by complete transfer of electron let us see let us take the example of sodium chloride sodium chloride sodium has 2 comma 8 comma 1 that is totally it has 11 electrons electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 1 so one electron is ex extra here if it loses one electron it it's a uh, it reaches octet its uh, outermost shell will be fulfilled that is it has eight electrons that's why it becomes happy okay so it loses one electron next what what about chlorine chlorine gains one electron because see the chlorine configuration the electronic uh, configuration of chlorine will be 2 comma 8 comma 7 because total number of electrons in the chlorine is 17 so what happens in the last shell it has only seven electrons so for Re uh, reaching octet number it has to gain another one electron so one electron will be added to it to make a, an octet see the one electron where does this one electron comes from electron comes from the sodium so sodium gives gives out one electron see sodium gives one electron and it transfers it to a chlorine and chlorine gains one electron it becomes octet see na becomes na plus cl becomes see here na cl they both react na plus and cl minus cl minus okay let us take another one example so atomic number of magnesium is 12 so we can write the electronic configuration as 2 comma 8 comma 2 and two electrons are excess here there are two extra electrons so what it has to do it has to lose two electrons to gain octet so what happens in the chlorine chlorine has total number of electrons that is atomic number will be 17 so how do you write the electronic configuration 2 comma 8 comma 7 so in here it has only seven electrons it needs one more electrons so this one electron will be given to each of the atom there are there will be two atoms of chlorine so two atoms of chlorine so each gets one one electron from here see it gets one electron from here and it also gets one electron from here and one electrons will be added here so how does it change mg2 plus that is it it is losing two electrons it is losing two electrons to be, to reach the octet level and also two mg cl2 okay so hope this is clear we have studied the ionic let us see the properties of ionic compounds the first is physical properties or physical nature the they are usually solid and they are strong they are brittle in nature so what have why it, this property is seen why they are solid because they have a very strong force of attraction between the ions let us take take the example of sodium chloride sodium ion and chlorine ions together make sodium chloride na plus and cl minus they do have a very strong force of attraction between the ions so they are solid in state next is melting and boiling point they usually have a very high boiling and melting point because the force of attraction is very high it needs a lot of energy to break the bond that's why we have to supply large amount of heat so the melting point and the boiling point will be very high what about the solubility they are soluble in water and also other solvents like kerosene petrol etc whether they conduct electricity or not yes when they are in the aqueous solution they conducts electricity let us do an activity for that we have taken salt solution in a beaker when we have we have kept two electrodes here and we have connected a bulb a battery and a switch so if bulb starts to glow we have to understand that the salt solution there is no though there is no wire between these two electrodes when this salt solution conducts electricity we have to understand that this uh, the ionic compounds will conduct the electricity if bulb will not glow what we have to understand this salt solution is not conducting electricity that's why bulb is not glowing so whenever we pass the turn on the switch the bulb starts to glow we have seen here so wh why does it happens because the let us take the example of sodium chloride again here also they split into na plus and cl minus na plus and cl minus so these ions helps to carry the electrons from this electrode to this electrode passing of electrons always creates the electricity helps to 
carry the uh, um, pass the electricity from this electrode to this electrode so by this we have to understand that ionic compounds in a aqueous solution are capable of conducting electricity but what happens when they are in solid state they are not able to conduct electricity because they are not in a ionic form only ions are capable of conducting electricity see in a sodium chloride they are, it is not in the ionic form that's why it is not a, able to conduct the electricity in the solid state so this was the end of this session if you have liked this video please hit the like button share with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you stay tuned for the next lessons